If you are interested in studying mechanical engineering, chemistry, or physics, this topic is going to be a big one that you will cover. This is a thermodynamics topic known as the Carnot system or Carnot engines. Now, up here, I have the typical model of a heat engine where we have a hot reservoir and a cold reservoir. Heat is absorbed by the hot reservoir. Some of this energy will be utilized by the engine as work. Then waste heat is expelled into the cold reservoir. And then we have this pump right here and the cycle comes back around. And that's the simple idea of an engine. Now, the cycle I have listed below here is a diagram with pressure on the y-axis and volume on the x-axis. This is known as a PV diagram, and this describes a Carnot cycle, which is the ideal theoretical cycle of an engine. We have what's called an isothermal expansion from A to B. This is where heat is transferred into the system and the temperature stays constant. But as you can see, since the volume gets bigger, we have an expansion. Now, this next process is called an adiabatic expansion, where basically no heat is added or removed from the system. Now, this C to D transition, this is where waste heat is removed from the system into the cold reservoir, this point in the diagram. This is an isothermal compression since you can see the volume is decreasing at this point. Now the last piece that we have is what's called an adiabatic compression. Once again, no heat is removed or added to the system. So basically a way you can think about it is in these two transitions, the temperature does not change, and in these two transitions, the heat does not change. Now this might seem kind of abstract just by looking at this, so what I'm also going to do is give you an equation. The equation that you see below the screen here is the equation for the efficiency of a Carnot engine. This is basically the ideal theoretical efficiency that you will see, where you take the ratio of the temperatures cold over hot reservoir, you subtract that from one, and then you multiply it by 100% to get the efficiency of the Carnot engine. Now I want to make sure we can apply this equation, so let's try a practice problem. Here we have a heat engine, and I want to calculate both the efficiency and the maximum theoretical efficiency, which will be like treating this as a Carnot engine. The real efficiency is going to be the work the engine does, which is 600 joules, divided by the heat absorbed by the system, which is 3,000 joules, and then I'm gonna multiply this by 100%. This will give me the efficiency of this engine. Now, if you go ahead and evaluate all these numbers, you should get a value of 20%. But I also need to calculate the theoretical efficiency, the maximum theoretical efficiency. So I can do this by taking one and then subtracting off a ratio of the temperatures here. Now I'm gonna multiply this by 100% and this will give me the theoretical maximum efficiency, which you should get about 44% as your answer. Notice comparing the theoretical efficiency, it's larger than the real efficiency, but that actually makes sense since this is the theoretical maximum efficiency and this is the actual efficiency of the heat engine. 